Ben Nash here. I'm a co-founder at XY Advisor and founder of financial advice business Pivot Wealth. My business baby I started from scratch a bit over six years ago. In that time, I have leveraged some of the learnings of the XY community to scale the business and become one of the better known financial advice businesses for high income accumulators. You can join me each Tuesday as I have the privilege of interviewing some amazing people where I'll selfishly be able to uh, continue my personal journey to improve every aspect of my advice process and hopefully you can learn a few things on the journey as well. Jump over to xyadvisor.com if you haven't signed up already to share and learn from other advisors or simply download the app. First Centier Investors is a global asset management group managing $247.3 billion of assets as at 30th of September 2021. They have 17 independent teams operating across equities, fixed income, listed and direct infrastructure, and multi-asset, led by principles of responsible investment and stewardship. They are home to FSSA Investment Managers, an Asian and global emerging markets equities investor. Stuart Investors, a pioneer in emerging market equities and sustainable investing. And Real Index Investments, a systematic equities manager. Hey guys, Ben Nash from XY Advisor here, uh, and today I'm I'm really excited to be here with a, a good mate of mine, Adele Martin, money mentor, um, gun advisor, marketing superstar. Uh, Adele is uh, newly sort of based, loosely um, runs a, a scale tech driven sort of advice and financial education business. Um, has uh, recently exited her one on one advice business, which is a whole story in itself, no doubt. Um, and he's doing a, a, a bit of a, a new project around um, helping advisors as well. So I'm keen. Um, I am not underplaying the fact that Adele is a superstar when it comes to marketing, so keen to unpack some of um, those insights and talk about some of the lessons that she's learned on her journey of, um, well, actually, I won't say how many years, but uh, it's a long time to learn a lot of things. So Adele, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Look, I'm keen to jump into the some of the, the growth and, and marketing hacks that, that uh, you found to be helpful f- for you. But before we do, I'm, I'm keen to selfishly pick your brain a little bit on um, teams and team growth. I know we're uh, hiring at the moment, been hiring for a while, trying to, you know, find advisors and other team members in the business. And I think that, you know, as your business grows, you come to that realization that the team is, is, is all important and in fact ends up being the actual um, business for you and, and you've had a few different iterations of the, the work that you've done, but what have been the big lessons, uh, that you have learned around building a great team? Yeah. So lots of lessons that I've learned. Firstly, I think, um, taking a step back and seeing where the bottlenecks of the business actually are. So rather than just chucking people at it, where are the actual problems? So as an example, you know, when I first started early on, you know, I didn't necessarily need a PA. I could use technology to solve my problem of like using calendar booking. So I'm always firstly, before I just hire people, I always think, can I try and automate or use technology to solve this problem first? What actually am I trying to solve? So um, that's the first thing. Once like the other thing that I've tried to do, so that's one example, calendar bookings is a simple one. The other one is, you know, how do I, do I need another advisor or is there a way that I can just reduce the time that I spend with clients? So, but still give them an amazing value and incredible experience. So one of the things we've done is we've automated the onboarding experience. And so we've got a, a program that they would go through before they saw me one-on-one as an advisor. Um, so, you know, It'd be step one, a welcome video. This is what working together is going to look like. Um, video two would be, you know, module two would be around goal setting and the clients would do a lot of the legwork that would normally get done one-on-one by themselves. Um, you know, step three would be risk profiling and questionnaire and all the stuff that I would usually explain one-on-one. So, yeah, I'm always thinking, do I actually need to, you know, employ people? Because employing people, you know, it's, you've got to find them, you've got to onboard them, you've got to mentor and train them. It, it's a big you know, time and money. So do, do I actually have to do that? Um, and then the second thing is if I do need to have a team and I've worked and trained lots of um, advisors in my time, you know, be really clear about what their role is going to be. You know, have a training plan that documents what you want to achieve by when so that everyone's expectations are super clear. Most people just want to know if they're doing a good job. 
and and how are they going to know if they're doing a good job? Um, you know, so we ne- really need to make that clear. By the end of week one, this is what we expect. By the end of week uh, first month, this is what we expect. Um, and then have, you know, those regular scheduled check-ins so you can make sure that they're doing it. So, yeah, I think that's that's definitely something, um, you know, I'd say is get really clear about your expectations. Um, and then the other thing I think about is, you know, can this position be part-time? It doesn't necessarily have to be full-time. Particularly if you're growing and scaling a business, you know, you mightn't have, you know, the the budget to employ someone full-time, but maybe you could make them full time, part-time and then over time increase it. So that's worked really well for me. Uh, can they work from home? So I know now in the new um, you know, COVID world, uh, working from home is sort of the norm. Uh, I've worked from home for five and have a virtual business for five plus years. And that really allowed me to have a team from anywhere in Australia or the world. So yeah. you know, think about can this be virtual because that's going to expand my reach, not just for marketing for clients, but for my team as well. Um, and then lastly, sorry, I know I'm taking a whole heap of information here. That's good. I um, want the gold. I want the gold. Yeah, I'll take all yeah. the questions. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I think is super critical is make, especially if you're running a virtual team, is just having those regular daily check-in points with your team, that 10 minute huddle at the start of it. So um, the huddle from us would look like, you know, looking at diary, what's coming up today. Um, and then, you know, how did that calendar appointment get in there? That needs to be moved or, oh, has that been done? So that, that that's the first thing. Um, and then everyone goes around and says, what were their top three tasks from yesterday? Um, are they done, not done or in progress? Um, so, and then we say, what are our top three tasks for today? Um, and then we say, is there any robust blocks, challenges, issues um, that you need help with? So we have a little framework that we use to you know, make sure that we are connecting with people, with our team every day. And so, yeah, that's a little framework that we use. Top three tasks from yesterday, um, top three tasks for today, um, Roblox challenges, issues. Um, yeah, so they're, they're the they're, well, sort of information, but um, that's that's some yeah. some tips on hiring. Yeah, look, I think that that team rhythm becomes all important and there's a lot of different ways. Like there are some elements that I think are helpful across a lot of businesses and then there's also, you know, um, every business is a little bit different. So finding out what works for you. But one of the big things that I've learned is that there is a, there's a difference between having great team members and having a great team. And I think both of those, like, yes, you need to focus on bringing great team members in, but then you need to focus on how do you work well as a team. You know, making sure you're creating a really positive environment for people to be really excited to go to work every day, whether that's um, a virtual environment or whether it's a physical environment or whether it's some sort of combination, which is probably more common these days. And then, you know, interactions and how do we communicate and all of these things. It's like a whole whole other uh, facet, which I had never thought of. It's just like, God, just, you know, make sure that there's good work to be done and then let's let's do our best at getting some good people in. But um I think the more that, yeah, you lean into that how we're working together, then the more you get out of your people. And even those little things, well, little things, not so little things like having those clear progression milestones and giving people feedback, I've found that our team really appreciate, um, you know, more than we sometimes think as as advisors or, um, you know, leaders in a, in a business as well. So, uh, yeah, look, uh, appreciate those insights. I just made a whole bunch of notes there as well as <laughs> been chatting as well. Adele, I'm keen to talk a bit about growth because I know that you, you know, you grew a financial planning business. You've now got the My Money Buddy course, which is the the education and sort of fully tech driven, no one on one stuff. Um, you know, we're just chatting online about the fact that you're not having to do sales calls or meetings, and a lot of it's sold on chat and um, delivered sort of at scale. Um, and I know from the, the you know the sort of previous conversations that we've had that you've had some pretty tremendous growth uh, around that. What do you think have been the biggest drivers of of that growth? Yeah, so I think a couple of things. Um, firstly, I've always invested in myself. So working with a coach or going to conferences, you know, overseas. So I think that's the first thing. Um, and I think about what I've spent on that and, you know, it's, it's a very big number. Um, but I wouldn't have got the growth I have if I didn't have that. So I think that's been important. Um, the other thing is I've also focused on not just marketing, the lead gener- like lead generation is one thing. What I've learned is that nurture piece. After you get them into your world, how do you nurture them? 
that nurture piece is really important for building trust. So when I'm talking about nurture, I'm talking about um, using a Facebook group, using a podcast, using email to build up that trust with them. So yeah, that that nurture piece has really helped and it's really improved my sales process because the time someone comes and sees you, they feel like they already know you. Um, a podcast is particularly great for that. You know, if someone's listened to me for 26 hours on a podcast, yeah. they already they already know me. They've listened to all my episodes. They know my kids' names. Um, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's been really important, um, that part of it as well. The other thing I've done with marketing, which is I, I don't rely on centers of influencers for leads. Early on, I did do that. Um, you know, I done, I've done the B&I early on, very early on. Um, I just never liked that. It was always a bit hit or miss, you know, whether the accountant was busy or not busy, you know, whether I got leads, having to edu- – I just felt like I was flogging a dead horse, having to educate and you know, tell them what to say and how to say it and, you know, um, yeah. So I, I have – Years ago, I went away from that center of influence stuff. Not to say I don't do it, and I'm happy to share one of the strategies that I've used in center of influences that actually has worked for me. Um, one of the best center of influences that continues to work for me is working with business coaches. So I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, but I don't want them just to be my my main focus is I generate the leads myself, and so that way I have more control about it. I think the other area. Um, which has driven my business growth, and you know, this is sometimes a little bit scary, is being okay with making mistakes. So, um, not everything is going to work first time. Um, in fact, some things aren't going to work at all. Um, and yeah, so I think you know, you you only grow and learn if you're making mistakes. So that's that's part of it. Not seeing mistakes as this bad thing. Like at school, we get a cross mm. or a tick and a cross as soon as a bad thing, you know, you fail. Well, actually, it's actually an opportunity to learn. And so, I mean, I think it's about my daughter who's learning to walk at the moment. If she would have, you know, the first time she fell over, if she would have not got back up, she would never have now learned to walk. Um, <laughs> so that. Yeah, those mistakes are part of life. And so, um, you know, knowing that you know, mistakes aren't a bad thing, they just mean you're learning and growing. So that's been the other big thing, my mindset, mindset around mistakes and seeing them as, you know, not a bad thing, but it's actually a great thing because it means you're learning and growing and it means you're taking risks. Mm. Yeah, I think that um, you can't get everything right all the time. And I think if you're worried about either making things perfect or never making a mistake, you're never going to do anything. But um, yeah, I also, I like you, I, when I started my business, I never wanted to rely on the traditional sort of centers of influence or um, referral partners to grow my business because I always felt that, you know, then you're reliant on them. And I suppose now, unfortunately, we do have a couple of really good um, or like a handful of good partners that that uh, introduce us to people when they feel that we can help them. But there's still the vast majority of the clients that we get are self-generated through our content and nurture and um, obviously referrals from clients as your business grows as well because I think you know for me is the other downside of this the referral partner or centers of influence type um, referrals is that we for, for my business we've got a really set sort of client that we want to work with you know the ones that we're confident we can add a ton of value to that are at a certain life stage that are of a certain psychographic as well as just a certain financial position and I've found that where you have people in your network that introduce people in the past that sometimes you almost feel like a bit of an obligation to, you know, if someone isn't the right the right fit, not to squeeze them into your model, but then to spend more time with them so that you feel like you're, you know, making them really happy and then they go back to the person and say that they had a really great experience where sometimes if you if that person had just come you know, randomly and, and put an inquiry through the website or booked up a call or something, you might just say, look, we, you know, we're just not the right um, business for you and you're better off doing this or this uh, instead. So I think it's, um, yeah, I think that they, they all have their merits and I know that there's a lot of advisors that have built great businesses that just around that and I think um, good luck to you for, for cracking the code. But uh, I think regardless, even if you are doing that really well, that knowing how you can sort of make it rain on your own is goes a long way to you controlling your own your own destiny. So I'm keen to unpack that um, in a little more detail. What are some of the key marketing channels that you have used, and and what have you found? What what worked for you, and what hasn't worked so well? Yeah, so um, being a guest on other people's podcasts that's worked really well. Um, I do a regular radio show. I've also uh, built up my PR list um, 
a lot. So, you know, now I regularly get called for, you know, I've done full feature articles in places like Mamma Mia, um, which for my audience is, you know, a, a great thing because a lot of eyes on um, a place like Mamma Mia. So, yeah, that sort of stuff, um, you know, webinars and speaking events for business coaches. So that's worked, you know, really well because they often have an accountant who does their, you know, business side of stuff. And, but they don't have anyone that's ever talked to them about their personal finances. So, you know, they, they start to sort of get, oh, I should actually not just have my eggs in this business basket. I should start to build my wealth. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, you know, business coaches want to add value to their clients and they're continually looking for more more information and, and education for them. So, you know, I can add value that way, make them look like a superstar, give great content. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm adding my list as well. So, yeah. And I find that business clients too are more likely to invest in themselves. That you know, it's easier for them to you know paying for things. You know, it's not a foreign concept. You know, um, and paying <laughs> for coaching. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, that, that's worked really well. I get lots of leads from doing that. Add value to their audience, build mine as well. I've done the same thing for mortgage brokers as well. So I've worked with a few mortgage brokers where you know they might have a podcast or they might have a Facebook group, and I've done some you know you know, a five day challenge or something inside those groups. So that's worked um as well as well. How I use that is I'm very strategic about making sure I'm always driving traffic from those things into my Facebook group. So and I'll say stuff like say I'm on a you know a radio interview like um and they're asking me about you know, how to get more in, you know how to drive growth or how to get more income or something like that. I'll say, you know, actually, we have a cheat sheet on that, on how to ask for a pay rise in our Facebook group, the Saving Squad. Um, we've got like a really detailed process that, that goes through that. Or actually, we've got a script on how to negotiate your bills and what to do if they say no. So I, I just, I strategically mention it um, to make sure we're driving traffic to the Facebook group. Um, and then inside the Facebook group on entry, I'm asking three questions. So one of the questions is, um, do you want to work with me? Something like, do you want to work with me on your money plan? Um, or something like that, or to increase something like that. Not, don't quote me exactly, but there's a question saying, do you want to work with me? And when they say yes, that's a trigger for us to have a conversation. And so um, also as part of that opt-in, I'm asking them, um, do you want our new case study that shows how they went from X credit card debt to investing? Um, do you want that case study? Drop your email below. They drop their email and then we um, send them a, um, a case study via email and now we've got their email address and then they go into our nurture process. So everything top of funnel drives into the Facebook group. The Facebook group, we ask three questions. Um, one of the questions is, you know, give, getting an email address, which is important for, for nurturing. Uh, the third question is, do you want to work with me? And they say yes. That lets us start a chat conversation with people that are hot. Um, so yeah, that's worked really well. And then inside the Facebook group, we are doing things regularly in there to be able to drive engagement. So, um, yeah, a, a challenge was one of the things we did an investment challenge. We've done, a, um, savings challenge. We've done lots of different things inside that group. Um, so yeah, that's, that's going to be my focus this year is, um, doing more inside that group, driving activity and engagement because there's people in there that might have been ready, you know, six, 12 months ago, but are now ready now. And if you're not constantly asking them, you miss those people. So yeah, they're the, that's sort of what's working, you know, well for me, um, is that now all that process happens automatic. Um, we don't manually add people to an email list or anything like that. Um, we use a software called group funnels that connects, um, Facebook to our, um, CRM that we use. We use Kajabi as our CRM. They talk to each other and all that happens automatically. Uh, you, you set this up once. Um, the all those questions, the email nurture, and then you never have to do it again. Mm. I love the automation piece, um, and I think it's, it's it's so important, especially when you are, you know, it, it, like it's a volume game. As as much as it's not to say that you know it's just about pumping more people in. Obviously, it's got to be the right people that are getting the right value that are going to get the right results and and um, be happy at the back end. But especially the more scale you want your uh, and, and the more efficient you want, you know, what you're doing to be, the, the more you need to, to leverage that. Tell us, Adele, you, we were chatting a little bit um, uh, just before we kicked off about like email uh, content and, and nurture nurturing from that. Um, what's wh What are some of the learnings that you've had there? Um, yeah, I might get you to answer that one first and I've got a follow-up for you as well. Okay. 
So I think the thing is, uh, email, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I didn't realize how important email was. Um, a year or so ago, I started concentrating on it more and it is super important, but for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I don't own Facebook. They could change everything tomorrow and, you know, I could lose all those emails. So, mm. um, those, that's one thing. Uh, so the second thing is people actually still checking emails. So, you know, I still get really good open rates on emails. So, and it's a way to build up that trust with people so and again people might have been ready six 12 months ago or now maybe they're married and had a kid and now they actually want to do something or they've just turned 30 or 40 and yes they do want to do something so uh yeah that that email nurture if you're not constantly doing that you actually miss um you can miss a lot of um you know people so yeah the email is really important so um i send a weekly email and i know people other people in the marketing space you know send two or three emails a week um I just send one a week and yeah, that, that works, has worked really well for me. We get leads every week from email. Mm. I found, I was just telling you before, but we started doing a weekly newsletter um, every Sunday. I started, you know, just on, it was actually January was the first one that we'd sent out and I'd done a bunch of different things before and like inconsistently, I would say, or tried in, in sort of fits and starts and uh, we've done it now every single week for uh, for a, a, a bit over a year and I've found that it, it's amazing how many people, I think it's like 8% of our new clients that that is their source, which obviously the people come from a whole bunch of different channels, but that's amazing. It's just one little thing and it's like, you know, ours is essentially content that we're, most of the content is stuff that we've got either on our podcast or social media posts or um, different things, but it's just there in a way that people, you know, it, it hits them, virtual tap on the shoulder. It's easy to read, digest and, um, and action. And I, yeah, I've, I've, I've actually been surprised how well that that's worked from a feedback perspective traction and ultimately, you know, the, the inbound inquiries off the back of it. Yeah, absolutely. So I am also a big fan of, because sometimes people hear us talking, you know, that sounds like a lot of work, but it's actually not. What I wanted to pick up on is something that you just said, which was we have one, this content already exists. Um, financial advisors have so much content that marketing and nurture is actually easy for us to do if we've got a process in place. So um, for me, I do a weekly Q&A in my Facebook group anyway, um, and to, to my clients in my money buddy. Uh, my assistant takes that to uses a program called, um, I think it's called Ottery, um, O-T-T-E-R. Yeah, um, I, I yeah. yeah. So she takes that and creates um, email from it. Um, she puts a blog style post for Facebook. Um, she creates a carousel for Instagram. She takes a quote from it and creates a meme. So she's got oodles of stuff from one thing that I've done. So mm. um, and we've just refined that process over time. So when I do the training down the Facebook group, I make sure I stick to a certain structure so it's easy for her to go, okay, well, this is the intro, these are the five points, this is the conclusion, and she can take it and run with it a lot easier. So, mm. yeah, um, I've given them great value to my community um, and we've got oodles of stuff for email and Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, totally. I found like for us, we do, because I'm doing the podcast, I normally do, I, I run my own podcast for, for um, Pivot. And I, we do two of those sessions a week and then the team clip them into different videos and they post a video, I think maybe even two videos a day goes across a bunch of channels. Those bits and the summary that goes with them just get snipped in with, um, you know, money hack of the week. It's one of the ones they just pull out one that's a hack. Money mistake of the week when someone, one of the ones is a mistake and then they put that in and just yep. write a little blurb about it. Like it's no extra work. It's process. Just... Like what, what you've got is a process and I think that's key. Um, mm. with any, anything, any part of the business, but particularly with marketing, you know, it's not people think there's one thing that you can do that's going to magically give you all these clients. It's not. It's just consistency and it's having a process and doing consistency um, mm. consistently, which is not exciting, but that's, that's what works. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And I think that with marketing, because there's so, like so many gurus out there and there's all this noise online, I, I know that I've fallen into this trap as well that early on in my business, I felt like I needed to be doing all of the things. And it's like, you've got obviously mm -hmm. you've got Facebook, you've got Instagram, there's TikTok now, um, yeah. you know, YouTube, your email marketing, Facebook ads, like there's all these things and you try to do all of them. And it's like, you're, you're playing surface level and unable to focus on, um, focus on them. But I found that for me, like focusing in and just going, okay, I just want this one thing. We did LinkedIn. I did LinkedIn um, day in and day out. I still do it day in and day out for, you know, six years. I've been um, on that one channel and 
after a while it started to build some traction as you say put a bit of a process behind it and then we added on we had on some video content i started doing some video content and um did that for a while and then started slowly building a bit of momentum with a bit of youtube stuff and then we started add a podcast to it afterwards but it's only once you you know you can focus in on your stuff polish up something that works to the point that you want it to be get someone else to support you in in doing it um that you can nail it unless you've got a super massive team that's well resourced it can you know, do all of that stuff, but it's easy to get lost. And then people go, oh, shit, this isn't working. So I'll just give up. And then, um, you know, that doesn't work or whatever. And it's just all that, that frustration. Adele, when you mention like email versus the, um, Facebook group, and I have to say, I've never done, um, you know, Facebook groups for my advice business. I know that you do it amazingly well, uh, in that saving squad community. What is the difference with the the approach to content between you know the different channels like email email in particular versus something like a a Facebook group? Is it a slightly different strategy or format? I know that you said you you're repurposing content from the other channels, yeah. but um, yeah, is it a different strategy or is it just yeah? A, a- so I've got two Facebook groups. One is just for people um, for my clients that have paid me, um, and then one is the free community. So. Um, yeah, so what I've done inside the saving squad, the free community, um, is we've done more like money masterclasses and five day challenges and things like that to really drive engagement. So, um, we did that last year, a five day investment challenge. And so, um, yeah, rather than starting, I know some people when they do challenges start a new group. I just used my existing group and did it inside there. So, um, we've done the money masterclass, which is, you know, that 30, 45 minute, um, webinar, um, what do they call it? A webinar, money masterclass. So I've used hmm. it to do that inside there. So I don't necessarily think for me personally, posting every day and stuff in there, um, you know, I haven't been doing that. But when I do an event, when I do like a, a challenge or a, a money masterclass, I've used it for that purpose. So, um, and then it also serves as people when they enter, um, asking that question, do you want to work with me and getting their email addresses? So yeah, that, that's where we've sort of done it. Um, and then the email um, is where we're just sending out, um, you know, the weekly sort of, I'm, I'm ne- I never ever would call it a newsletter, but um, a weekly, um, you know, summary of what we're, so sometimes I do different types of emails, I change it up. So I would do more of a, a teach style email and then I do more of a story style email. And then I do a really short, um, sharp email. So, you know, a little nine worder. Um, are you still looking to, you know, start investing this year or um, get you super sorted this year? Um, so those, those short, sharp emails work really well because people think you're talking to them and they reply back to you and have a conversation. So I mix up, you know, that's a sales email, starts that sales conversation. So those short, sharp emails work really well. You can't do them all the time. I do once of those a month. Um, and then we've got different sorts of emails, um, you know, around, you know, some of them are teaching, um, different different sort of style stuff. Mm. Yeah, I think it, I think ultimately, and the, the beauty of the um, software that's out there these days is it gives you the insights as to to what works and and what doesn't, so you can test and measure. But um, yeah, I had a, those, a great... sh- those sharp those short emails have been working very well. Yeah, of, of the engage engagement. Yeah, I think as well. One of the things that I found is that in the subject line, having them quite short and cryptic and sometimes mm-hmm. like not capitalizing letters in the correct way which actually mm-hmm. stresses me out a bit because i'm super anal with stuff <laughs> but um you put a question in there and, and make it a bit weird and people are like shit what's that i'll actually oh, i'll open it up oh that's actually that's interesting i'm gonna um engage with that so uh, yeah I think makes makes a difference the subject heading is imp- is as important or more important than the email body itself and so, yeah, a hundred percent. So I, th- I was just trying to think of the one I sent um, recently in the new year. I'll see if I can get it up because that one worked really well. Um, but yeah, I think definitely having the email strategy is important. Um, and yeah, just keeps you front of mind with everyone. One of my best subject lines was just money plans, and it was like not no capital or money, and then no question mark or anything. I think it was yep. like, so got some crazy open rate and, and response rate off the back of it as well. That. Uh, I think people get so much noise that you've got to sort of do try different things that are different. They don't always work. Like you say, don't be afraid of making a mistake. But, um, 
yeah, different different things to see what gels with your audience and your list as well. Yeah, so the one I had was working together. Um, that was the last one that I sent. They got a really good response to. It just said working together. Um, mm. And then I've just said, um, you know, their name. I'm going to work with a handful of um, clients um, in January. Would you like to work with me? Um, I think that was the mistake that I've made early on is not asking, doing all this marketing and not yeah. asking for sale. <laughs> like, yeah. People go, oh, I thought you were taking on new clients. Why would you think that? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. Or it is really it. easy to fall into that trap and you don't, I'm, I'm the same, that you get a bit of gun shy and you don't want to be too pushy and so you fall into this give value, give value, give value, but sometimes just asking the question. Um, yeah, yeah, so that was the other one. P- quick question was another one that it said quick question was the um, subject heading. That worked really well. Yeah, there's lots of, but yeah, you're, the, the subject heading is as important as the actual email itself. Um, and asking for a, a sales email every now and again, like that nine word, hey, do you still want help sorting your super? And people are like, mm. yeah, I do want to help sort my super. Yes. Um, and those sort of ones are really important to do as well. Yeah, I think the key is really being consistent and just trying things so that you can see what works and then building on the learnings from that. Um, yeah. Adele, as you know, I, I love marketing and I could talk about this stuff um, all day, but uh, I know you're, you're a busy lady, um, so really appreciate you sharing your insights. I'm keen though to, for people that are interested to learn more about the, the advisor support uh, mentoring type setup that you're doing, can you give us the, um, the big picture on that and, and how people can learn more? Yeah, so I just had a special round number birthday, um, so I'm, I'm okay to say I'm 40 now, um, and that, that tripped over to me, half, half my life has been in advice now. So it's now made me think about, well, how do I want to contribute? Um, how do I want to give back to this amazing industry? I see so many advisors struggling and doing stuff, um, you know, a hard way. I just think if I could um, help support them and give back, that would be amazing. So, and now I've got my business to a place where I can do that. Um, now I have it where it's effectively a very scaled model and I have, you know, the kids in daycare. I have more time to give. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to now to work more with advisors to support them and, and to mentor um, advisors. So, um, yeah, I really want to help, um, you know, them to see how valuable. I know they know how valuable they are, but make sure they're charging for what they're worth, um, that they're, you know, that they understand how to, they can easily do marketing and not be something that's a burden um, that you know, serving clients doesn't have to be you know hard. We can make it easier by doing a few simple things. We don't have to work a hundred hour weeks. So yeah, mm. I just really excited to be able to give value and support advisors this year. And so yeah, if anyone wants to is looking for support, um, you know, to grow and scale their business, I'm happy to have a chat to them. Um, they can find me, adelemartin.com. They'll find me. Um, I'm always in the XY group. I love that group that you guys have created. I think it's an amazing community. Um, so happy to have a chat about, you know, what that might look like. Awesome. Well, I know from uh, from the conversations that we've had over the last sort of, uh, you know, uh, it's been a long time, um, <laughs> but uh, some of the insights that are there. So for anyone that is keen to, to do better on growth, which I think is pretty much almost everyone, uh, feel free to, to, to reach out to Adele and uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, Adele, thank you again. Really appreciate you sharing your insights. <laughs>